in the autumn of 1914, war was declared by Great Britain against Germany. Soon after, Australia entered into that war. In the months and years that followed, a war that began through conflict in Europe, spread across the globe and became known as the Great War, was said to be the war to end all wars. A war that uh, dragged in nations and uh, continents that set families and separated them across the globe. Young men sent off to fight battles in foreign fields, never to return home. In November of 1918, Shortly before dawn, there was a, a party of Germans, including a Catholic uh, politician and uh, two army generals. They entered a, a guarded railway carriage in the forest of Compagnie. Six hours later, at 11 o'clock on the 11th day, of the 11th month after four and a quarter years of war the guns fell silent and the battlefields of Europe ceased to be battlefields Germany had admitted defeat and signed an armistice that was the first armistice day of course, it was not the first armistice to ever be signed. Many wars had ended with the signing of surrender. And as we know now, that great war was not the war to end all wars. That day of surrender was simply the end of the great war. Many wars have been fought since and no doubt many wars yet to come. In the book of Joel, the Bible says here in verse 9 of chapter 3, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, prepare war, make up the mighty men. Sorry, wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves, and come all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Fear the cause, thy mighty ones, to come down, O Lord. The book of Joel gives a cry of war. It gives a declaration for man to beat their plowshares into swords, to turn their pruning hooks into spears. We saw many men of different occupations across Australia lay down their tools of their trade and pick up a rifle and a bayonet and go forth to war. And they taught their hands to war. They gave themselves to warfare. Ecclesiastes says there's a time for that. There's a time for peace, there's a time for war. Just as there is a time to be born and there is a time to die. On the 11th day of the 11th month, at the 11th hour of that day on, in 1918, there was a day of peace. We call it Remembrance Day, remembering those that have fallen, remembering the wars that have been fought, remembering those that gave their life for the peace of the world, for justice, for righteousness, to fight for what is right and good. And so we faced a time of war and we celebrated the time of peace. Sadly, there's been many conflicts since that have need to be fought. And truth be told, probably many fought that didn't need to be. But nonetheless, war comes and goes. We have times of peace and we have times of war. Today, we remember those times of war and the peace that was hard won. As I think about Remembrance Day, as I think about those who sacrificed so much, I look for a day where we will learn war no more. 
just as in the book of Joel, we are told that there is a time to beat our plowshares into swords. Look at book of Micah, just a few books on. The Lord has this for us in Micah chapter 4. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it. And many nations shall come and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, and to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among many people, and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. But they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts hath spoken it. The Bible te speaks of a day coming and teaches us that there will come a day when men will walk in the ways of the Lord, they will go up to the house of God and say, He will teach us His ways and he, we will walk in His paths. His paths are a way of peace. His, his ways are ways of righteousness. And the day is coming where we will learn war no more. And I look forward to that day. And on this Remembrance Day, as I remember the necessity of war, as I remember the horror of war, as I look back with thankfulness and we put a day aside to remember those who were willing to pick up their sword and go forth to war, I hope for a day where we will learn war no more. I drive down the highway and as I drive down the highway, I often pass convoys of uh, army vehicles, perhaps their tanks on the back of, of uh Low loaders getting dragged up the highway to training exercises. Sometimes it's armoured personnel carriers running down the road full of troops to some other training or, or work they're doing. They're learning war. These, these vehicles are filled with men and women that are learning war. We perhaps don't think about it much in our day-to-day -day lives, but yet there's an aspect of our country where we drive by, and I'm grateful. I'm grateful to see those, those uh, green camouflaged, vehicles heading down the road knowing that hey there are those that are willing to bring uh, peace in a time of conflict there are those who are willing still to learn war for the security of our nation and I thank God for those men and women that are willing to take up arms and learn the art of war but I hope for the day where they'll not be needed Amos yeah, sorry Micah here speaks of a day where every man shall sit under his vine. A day where we'll find our place under our own fig tree, so to speak, and none shall make them afraid. A day where we will be able to sit at peace and not be afraid of enemies on foreign fields or on our own shores, but we'll be able to sit at peace because the Lord of hosts hath spoken it. The Bible says that the only hope for peace is in Christ Jesus. The only hope for peace is when God reigns supreme, when His will is done on earth as it is in heaven. But until that day, until that day, we will have these times of war and times of conflict. And we can look back on the times gone. 1918, there is perhaps... Very few, if any, that are left who, as adults, remember that war and that conflict. There are perhaps those that, as children, grew up with the stories lived by those who survived those times. But not many days after, not many years after that armistice, of course, we entered into that great conflict known as the Second World War. And from there, we've moved on into 
great times of uh, hardship when we think of Vietnam and we think more recently of Afghanistan. We can think of the conflict in Korea. Uh, we can think of the peacekeeping exercises in East Timor. We can think of the Iraq War and the conflicts over there in the Middle East. The different places of war where our men and women have had to go and lay down their life for their friends to secure peace in a time of conflict. Let's remember them today. Be thankful for their willingness to sacrifice themselves. And as we remember them and those times of conflict, let us look for hope, with hope for a time of peace. A time where we will learn war no more. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn, at the going down of the sun and in the morning. We will remember them, lest we forget.
Thank <laughs> you.